Strategies, tips, and trends from pre-med, medical school, and residency admissions experts. This is the Med Edits Podcast. And here's your host, Dr. Jessica Friedman. Hi, this is Dr. Jessica Friedman. I am the president and founder of Med Edits Medical Admissions. And today we are going to be talking about the medical school personal statement. You probably have already started doing a lot of reading and exploring on the internet as you get ready to start writing your personal statement. And I wanted to discuss some very general um, guidelines that you can follow as you start to write your personal statement. As we work with many, many applicants who are about to start this process, who are involved in the medical school admissions process, we realize that as you sit down to write your personal statement, it can be incredibly daunting um, and somewhat stressful. And many students are confused about what they should write about, um, what topics they should focus on, what topics they shouldn't focus on. And so, you know, as you sit down to start to write your personal statement, it's good to kind of have an idea of what do the admissions committees want to hear from you, okay? And in order to sort of have a firm idea about that, assuming that you are applying to allopathic medical schools in in the United States, you will be applying using the AMCAS application service. And the AMCAS personal statement instructions are actually fairly specific in terms of what they want to hear from you. And this is the prompt, which you should really sort of keep in mind and maybe actually keep in front of you as you're writing your personal statement. So this is the prompt. Use the personal comments essay as an opportunity to distinguish yourself from other applicants. Consider and write your personal comments essay carefully. Many admissions committees place significant weight on the essay. Here are some questions that you may want to consider while writing the essay. Why have you selected the field of medicine? What motivates you to learn more about medicine? What do you want medical schools to know about you that hasn't been disclosed in other sections of the application? In addition, you may wish to include information such as unique hardships, challenges, or obstacles that may have influenced your educational pursuits, comments on fluctuations in your academic record that are not explained elsewhere in your application. So, as you can see, the AMCAS personal comments essay prompt really isn't vague. There are fundamental questions that admissions committees want you to answer when writing your personal statement. And while the content of your statement should be focused on medicine, answering the open-ended third question is a bit trickier. So let's think about these questions in a slightly different way. What have you done that supports your interest in becoming a doctor? We always advise applicants to practice what we call evidence-based admissions. The reader of your essay wants to see the evidence that you have done, what is necessary to understand the practice of medicine. This includes clinical exposure, research, community service, and other activities that are related to medicine. No one student will have a completely identical background and experience profile as another student. So again, there really is no right or wrong, um, but you do want to highlight those interests that really support why you want to become a doctor when you write your personal statement. So that leads into our next question. Why do you want to be a doctor? Now, this question may seem pretty basic, and it is but admissions officers need to know why you want to practice medicine. Many applicants make the mistake of simply listing what they have done without offering real insights about those experiences that answer the question, why medicine? Your reasons for wanting to be a doctor may overlap with those of other applicants. This is okay because the experience in which you participated may be the same, but the stories you can tell about those experiences and the wisdom you gained are completely distinct to you because they are only yours. Medical school admissions committees want to know that you have explored your interest in medicine deeply and that you can reflect on the significance of these experiences. But writing only that you want to help people does not support a sincere desire to become a physician. 
you must indicate why medicine in particular, rather than social work, teaching, or another helping profession is your goal. Next, think about how have your experiences influenced you? It is really important to show how your experiences are linked and how they have influenced you. How did your experiences motivate you? How did they affect what else you did in your life? How did your experiences shape your future goals? Medical school admissions committees like to see a sensible and logical progression of involvements. And ideally, you want those involvements to sort of become deeper and more meaningful and more impactful as you go along in your education. While not every activity you've participated in needs to be logically connected with another, the evolution of your interests and how your experiences have nurtured your future goals and ambitions show that you are motivated and committed and curious. Medical school admissions committees also want to know who are you as a person? What are your values and what are your ideals? Medical school admissions committees want to know about you as an individual beyond your interest in medicine too. This is where answering that third open-ended question in the prompt becomes so important. What was interesting about your background, your youth, your education, your home life? What did you enjoy most about college? Do you have any distinctive passions or interests? What about your scholarly interests and your academic explorations? Write about those topics that are unlikely to appear elsewhere in your statement that will offer depth and interest to your work and more insight about who you are as an individual. So with those sort of basic questions in mind, now let's kind of talk about the general outline and structure for the personal statement. As far as your introduction, we realize that you hear conflicting advice. Some tell you to start with a story, others tell you never to start with a story. Regardless of the advice you receive, be sure to do these three things in your introduction and throughout your statement, really. Some of these things apply to your entire statement. For your introduction, be true to yourself. Everyone will have an opinion regarding what you should and should not write. Follow your own instincts. Your personal statement should be a reflection of you and only you. Realize that anybody that you show your personal statement to, whether that is your best friend, whether that is a professor, whether that is your principal investigator in the lab you are working, everybody's going to have an opinion. So sometimes getting too many opinions can actually be incredibly confusing. So we encourage students to get opinions as early on in the writing process as possible and not to get too many. And then as they're getting closer to the submission date to kind of, you know, maybe just have one or two go-to people that they will discuss their personal statement with. Number two, and this is for sure something that you really should do regardless, start your personal statement with something catchy. Um, think about the list of the potential topics that we already went over, but you want your statement to really grab your reader. Number three, don't rush your work. Composing thoughtful documents really takes time, and you don't want your writing and ideas to be sloppy and underdeveloped. Most important is to begin your statement with something that immediately engages your reader. A narrative or story and, or anecdote in the first or third person is ideal. Whatever your approach is, your first paragraph must grab your reader's attention and motivate her to want to continue reading. I encourage applicants to start their personal statement by describing an experience that was especially influential in setting them on their path to medical school. This can be a personal experience or an extracurricular one. Remember always to avoid cliches, avoid quotes from others, and be honest and authentic in your writing and write in your own style. Don't try to be someone who you are not by trying to imitate a personal statement that you have read online or by trying to tell the reader what you think you want the, you think the reader wants to hear. Consistency is key, and your interviewer is going to make sure that you, when you go on an interview, that you match the personal statement they are reading. So you want sort of your speaking style to be similar to your writing style, okay? No two people write in the exact same way. So as far as the body of your essay, 
The bulk of your essay should be about your most valuable experiences, whether those are personal, academic, scholarly, clinical, academic, and extracurricular, that have impacted your path to medical school and through which you have learned about the practice of medicine. The best personal statements cover several topics and are not extremely narrow in scope. Why is this important? Many different people with a huge variety of backgrounds, some will be physicians, some won't be physicians, some will be researchers, some will be strictly clinicians. So a variety of people with different interests and ideas of what makes a great personal, personal statement and a great medical student will be reading your essay. So you want to make sure that your essay has the broadest appeal possible. As I have outlined in my book, which you can find on Amazon, The Med Edit's Guide to Medical School Admissions, the following exercise will help you to determine what experiences you should highlight in your personal statement. When composing your personal statement, keep in mind that you are writing, in effect, a story of how you arrived at this point in your life. But unlike a story in the creative sense, yours must also offer convincing evidence for your decision to apply to medical school. Before starting your personal statement, create what I call an evidence-based personal inventory in the following way. Write down a list of the most important experiences in your life and in your development. The list should be all-inclusive and should comprise those experiences that had the greatest impact on you. Put the list, which should, be con which should consist of personal, extracurricular, academic, and you know, any other significant event in chronological order. Now from this list, determine which experiences you consider to be the most important in helping you to decide to pursue a career in medicine. This experience-oriented approach will allow you to determine which experiences best illustrate the personal competencies that medical school admissions committees look for in your written documents. Remember that you must provide evidence for your interest in medicine and for most of the personal qualities and characteristics that medical school admissions committees want to see. After making your list, think about why each most important experience was influential and write that down. What did you observe? What did you learn? What insights did you gain? And how did the experience impact your path and your choices? Then think of a, a story or illustration for why each experience was important. After doing this exercise, evaluate each experience for its significance and influence for its story value. Choose to write about those experiences that were not only influential, but also those that will provide interesting reading, keeping in mind that your goal is to weave the pertinent experiences together into a compelling story. In making your choices, think about how you will link each experience in transition from one topic to the next. Decide which of your listed experiences you will use for the body of your personal statement and create a general outline. Keep in mind that you also will have your activities entries where you can write about all of your experiences and you should be using those entries as an opportunity to elaborate on your experiences. And we will be doing another podcast on the activities entries themselves. As far as your essay conclusion goes, um, it is customary to go full circle back to the topic. And you might have heard this same idea when writing your college admissions essay because this is a pretty common tactic. Um, so you want to go full circle and go back to your introductory topic or anecdote that you introduced at the start of your essay. But this isn't a must. We've seen many, many successful essays that have gotten students into medical school when they haven't done this. You ideally want to summarize why you want to be a doctor and address what you hope to achieve and what your goals are for medical school. So what should you do in writing your personal statement? Let's kind of summarize. Number one, illustrate your passion for medicine. Your reader must be convinced that you are excited about and committed to a career in medicine. Above all, your personal statement should be about you. Explain to your reader what you have done and why you want to be a doctor with insight, compassion, and understanding. Give the reader sort of a mental image of who you are. You want the reader to be able to envision you as a caregiver and a medical professional. You want to convey that you would be a compassionate provider at the bedside, someone who could cope well with crisis and adversity. Be interesting and engaging. The best personal statements engage the reader. 
This doesn't mean you must use big words or be a literary prize winner. In fact, sometimes the most straightforward writers can write the most impactful statements. Write in your own language, your own voice, and your own style. But really think about your journey to medical school and the most intriguing experiences you have had. Make sure your personal statement flows well. You want to tell your story by highlighting those experiences that have been the most influential on your path to medical school and give a clear sense of that chronology. You want your statement always to be logical and never to confuse your reader. You also want to show insight and introspection. The best medical school personal statements tell a great deal about who you are and what you have learned through your experiences and the insights that you have gained. When I finish reading your personal statement, I really want to know who you are, not only as a future physician, but as a human being. So what are some common myths that we often hear students say? Let's kind of, let's go over those. So we often hear students say, my personal statement has to have a theme. What is my theme going to be? This really isn't true. The overwhelming majority of personal statements do not have themes. In fact, most are somewhat autobiographical in nature and are just as interesting as, and, as, and compelling as those statements that have been woven around a theme. Now in college, you were encouraged to write something that was incredibly creative and that really stood out and was different and was unlike anything else. The medical school personal statement is very, very different. And the approach that we take to a medical school personal statement is extremely different than what you took when writing your college essay. It is only the very talented writer who can creatively write a personal statement around a theme. And this approach often backfires since the applicant fails to answer the three questions in the prompt that we listed at the beginning of this podcast. Another common theme, my personal statement should not describe patient encounters or my personal medical experiences. Again, not true. The actual topics on which you focus in your medical school personal statement are less important than the understanding you gained from those experiences. We have many successful clients who have written extremely powerful and compelling personal statements that included information about clinical encounters, both personal and professional. Write about whichever experiences were the most important on your path to medicine. It is always best, however, to avoid spending too much space on childhood and high school activities, focused instead on experiences that are more recent. I need to sell myself in my personal statement. Not really true, sort of true. You never want to boast in your personal statement. Let your experiences, insights, and observations speak for themselves. You want your reader to draw the conclusion on his or her own that you have the qualities and characteristics the medical school seeks. Never tell what qualities and characteristics you possess. Let the readers draw these conclusions on their own based on what you have written. You can see personal statement examples um, on our website at mededits.com. And you can also find those in my book, The Med Edits Guide to Medical School Admissions. Um, I hope that this podcast has been helpful for you, and I hope that you have an idea of how to approach the medical school personal statement. We offer one-on-one -on -one advising um, and document review and editing if you need further help beyond you know, what is offered at your college or from your own pre-med advisor. So feel free to visit us at www.mededits.com. And thank you so much for listening today. You've been listening to the Med Edits podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast for more pre-med, medical school, and residency admission strategies that will help you obtain the career of your dreams. Be sure to rate and review this podcast so we can continue to provide more admissions guidance.